She is absolutely one of the fastest horses I've ever seen run barrels. Fallon Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo. Maybe Flo. <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. In the victory lap, Ellen Taylor will win. She's riding a new horse, a young horse, out of her champion Flo. She has absolutely been unstoppable. What's up, Flowies? Welcome back to my channel. You guys, we're going back to my home state of Florida, and I couldn't be more excited. Florida always gives you, like, sunshine vibes. Of course, I wish we could stop in and go to Disney World, but, you know, that is not in the sketch for this time. So we're going to head down to Florida. There is a tour rodeo, which the WPRA tour rodeos, we kind of follow all over the place because those help us qualify for things later in the rodeo year. Um, so we want to be top three, top four in those tour standings. And we're going to get to hit one of those tour rodeos this week. And we're going to bring you along. So let's go. Our first stop is going to be Arcadia, Florida. So this rodeo is a really, really pretty indoor arena. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The only, the only catch is like a lot of rodeos, the ground is not, it, one out of five stars, one out of five stars. So I'm gonna opt to ride Lolo today because she is like a straight up four wheeler. She's gonna go in there, take care of herself. I don't feel like I'm putting her at risk at all. She's gonna go in, do her thing, and she's gonna do her best to win us a check. did exactly what I thought she would do. We were 17-4, just outside of placing, but still a really beautiful, solid, amazing run. And that's it for Arcadia, but stay tuned because the next rodeo is at Okeechobee, and this is a completely different vibe. Okay, so we drove 13 hours, and Whoa, we, drove, nice. we drove 13 hours the first day, and it was like an easy 13 hours. Your girl looked at the, I, whew, it's bright. Your girl looked at the map and was like, don't stop in Mobile. You know how long Florida is. Go three more hours and find stalls there. But as I'm Googling and driving and Googling and trying to figure it out as we stop, I realized Mobile's the best option. And that's what happens to us every single time is that we can't get stalls like three more hours away. And I'm sure like this is gonna be riddled with comments of like, you can stay with us, blah, blah, blah. But like when you're driving down the road, that is not, you don't, if you don't pop up in Google, like I can't find it. So, we had a beautiful dinner, we did the whole deal, horses were great, stalls amazing, immaculate, lady was amazing. And then we got in the truck, we got up, did cardio like Queens at 6 a.m., got in the truck at 6.30, headed out, had a little bit of trouble with the battery on the truck or on the trailer to unhook and hook it back up. And we got to Florida. Now, Slack was gonna start at 4 p.m. in Arcadia and I knew that there was like three to four hours of slack, but as we kept getting closer to our destination, like three hours out, it was like the clock never moved. Like I would drive an hour and the clock would still say, you have three hours, you have three hours, you have three hours, you have three hours. So it's just insane down here, like how hard it is to get all the way to where you need to go. This has happened to me like six times if you've watched the vlog, like we're, we leave on time, we leave early, no big stops, nothing happens, and I just can't get, it's like traffic slows down so much in certain parts of Florida on the highway. Um, so, we got there at like seven, I think like 10 after seven last night, and the barrels didn't start until eight, so it ended up being fabulous. Um, Cody got these new, these new uh, lapel mics, is that the technical term, Cody? Yeah. So there's new lapel mics. So like I could like, I could talk to you over here. Like I'm over here just talking to you. I'm Christopher walking and talking. Like I'm Joaquin Phoenix and talking. Like we're so fancy. We're so fancy. Cowgirlchannel.com. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're in the AutoZone parking lot where everyone works on their cars in the parking lot. You know, typically we're at a very bouge AutoZone, not spawns. Um, that'd be very cool. But dad is working on trying to find out. I think there's a fuse gone wrong up there. I do a lot of this stuff. So dad's doing it because I'm doing this and talking to you. But 
I know how to crawl under the hood. Like I was raised by that man. I know how to do a lot of things. Um, let me show you guys what we, our setup. Cause I just put this on my Insta story, but maybe you missed it. Okay. We always say like modern problems have modern solutions, but this is an ancient solution. Ancient problem, keeping food cold. Like that's not new. Ancient also like it, just, here it is. There's a cooler in there that runs off solar, like my car. We're not like that hippie, like we are, but we're not. Like we're not against like having a Yeti full of ice, but I don't know, like not nothing against Yeti, but like I've never had the ice last as long as it says it would on the commercial ever. And if you pre prep your meals or if you buy meals, like I buy dad's meals at the grocery store and they're in cardboard, and so when the ice melts, the cardboard then just like disintegrates and then your meal is gone. So we were putting the meals inside of Ziploc bags. Um, but we are like, we're eco-conscious. So like that wasn't like the best solution. So we're like, what can we do? And I found this cooler. I don't know if I found it or Cody found it or dad found it. Maybe it was I dad. It. Was that me? I found it, bought it, had it shipped to the house. And I had that plug put in. Now, of course, we're smart enough to not leave the plug in all night when the truck is not running because the truck is supposed to charge the battery to the trailer. If you didn't know, that's how it works. It's called the charge line. And of course, you wouldn't leave something plugged in or something turned on because it would drain the battery. And then you could turn the truck back on and then it would recharge your battery over a certain amount of time. That's not happening for us. So we have this backup solution of like ancient technology, solar panels. So you know, my car runs on sun, so does the cooler, and it keeps everything, like, it can freeze everything to, like, 32 degrees. Not spawns again, I think it's called Go Sun, and you get online, and they're expensive, three or 400 bucks, but when you buy $25 worth of ice several times a day, um, these look real cheap after a while. So, also, upgrade that I did for us was using one of our garment bags as a dirty clothes hamper and just making a little hole to throw the dirty clothes in after we are done. And then this is mine and Cody can have this one. And then boom, when we go home, we just pop one bag and take it home. She's a clean queen too. So this is like nothing revolutionary, but we don't rodeo like everybody else rodeos. So I figured it might be super interesting to see. We had these mounted um, to put the hats up and then, <laughs> and then this polo wrap wrapper thingy, you know, and then we have this thingy to put our jeans in this like folding shelf moment. And that's the T. And what's so cool about ranch dressing shirts is we could have them folded up and put in our own things and kind of do away with all of this. You can literally wad these up and wear them because they're wrinkle free. So you don't have to dry clean these or anything. Throw them in the washer. They're beautiful. All of our garments have been washed and dried in the washing machine, like all of them. Um, so I can vouch because I'm like not super, not super domesticated myself. So that's the small trailer tour. And now we're going to go fix this fuse. So Okeechobee, I've also never run at this rodeo either. Um, it's outdoor. It's got a super long alleyway. It's kind of got like a old school rodeo vibe. Like everything's kind of wooden. Um, I don't know. It's just really, really cool. So I'm excited to run again. Okay, I've checked it out and I've decided I'm definitely gonna run Hush Money. It's a long way from the third barrel out and sis can haul the mail like the Pony Express from the third out. She is absolutely one of the fastest horses I've ever seen run barrels, much less one that I've been on. So, wish us luck, cause we're gonna go. Gorgeous run, we made some mistakes. Just outside of placing a 17.4, really, really proud of her um, because this was only her third pro rodeo. Maybe it was her second. I think it was second, second pro rodeo, yeah. Um, but we've got no breaks. We got no breaks. 
So we rattled the gate at this rodeo and I'm hoping that we can get our brakes installed because she is running so hard that it's a little sketch. It's no time to rest, there's no time for vacation, there's no time to like do all the stuff and things. However, we're out of frozen tundra Texas and that polar vortex that just hit. So we're enjoying the Florida sunshine and it's time to get our booties to that tour rodeo in Lake City. Okay, we are in the slack after the rodeo and this rodeo in Lake City, girl, let me tell you, three and a half or four hours long it takes them to get all the way to us in the slack. By the time we run, it's almost one o'clock in the morning. I've opted to run Hush Money again. This is the first time for Hush Money to see zero fences. Like the barrel pattern is ginormous. So here we go. We were a 17.7, not the fastest. Um, I still don't know quite everywhere that she didn't have everything together because it looked really good to me and I'm gonna call it a win. Um, we're not gonna get a check at this rodeo, but I learned something. When you run that hard from the third barrel out, you're gonna have to try a little harder to stop because sis did not stop for the back gate, which means that we're gonna have to go home and I'm gonna have to hit some jackpots and really teach her um, how to stop. A lot of young horses, if you're training your own young horses or you're starting to expose your horse to new things, some horses when they really find fifth gear, when they really learn how to run, it can be a little scary for them. So some of them like shake or they didn't know they could run quite that hard um, and others simply kind of lose a few things. They don't turn as well or they don't stop as well. So after this run, we are gonna head home. I am making the decision to turn out of the next rodeo, which would be in Montgomery, Alabama, to go home and work on my brakes. I know that seems really crazy, but when you're on the road or you are pursuing something huge, it doesn't have to be rodeo, any time that you get a chance to like regroup for just a second, slowing down does not mean stopping. If I take a second here, go to some small jackpots, work on a few fundamentals, and then go back out on the road for some more pro rodeos, I'm gonna be able to win for a a longer period of time. I'm gonna have a more um, quiet and confident horse. Flowbot's gonna get to make some runs. Um, and I'm gonna be able to get the communication down between me and these Colts that have never been out on the road with me full time. So it's gonna be super important for me to figure this out. And again, stopping is not slowing down. My 1% is gonna be shutting this down, going home and getting used to all of these different gears, figuring out headgear, figuring out what horse likes what arenas and what ground, and then getting my booty right back on the pro rodeo trail. So you guys stay tuned. There's a bunch of jackpots coming soon and I'm not really sure which horse is gonna get the call at the next bunch of pro rodeos. Will it be Lolo? Will it be Flowbot? Will it be Hush Money? Shortcake? I don't know. Um, I've got to go do my homework at the jackpots and then I'll let you know. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to be subscribed. Ding the notification bell because I want you to be there when I figure out exactly what horse I'm going to run. I don't know any more than you do. So stick with me. 2021 is going to be a really exciting year. We are still 114th in the world standings. I laugh at that because that's like not where you want to be and you typically wouldn't tell people that. But I want you guys to watch the climb because it's the most fun thing ever. And if I can do it, you can do it too. You guys, that's it for today. As always, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein, and say thank you to Jesus. See you next time.